time for another quick video analysis. Um, this one is uh, thanks to Sir Helgi who recorded the video. This was at Kaid Fall Autumn or September Crown. <laughs> I'm still not exactly sure what the proper name is. So this was in the middle rounds. Uh, on the left is my friend Sir Killian uh, and on the right is me. And uh, going to go over this hopefully relatively quickly and what I'm going to try to do is strike a balance between talking about things that are of interest to SCA fighters at and around my level but also of things that might be interesting to people who are not either not in the SCA or not medieval combatants so um, let me know if I strike the right balance because I'm trying to figure out the best way to sort of address these fights so the way that we're going to do it is sort of go through at regular speed and then I'll switch to slow motion versions or go frame by frame when I think there's something interesting going on. So really briefly, the way this works, um, you have to strike with uh, speed and power above the knees and below the wrists. A blow to the arm or leg disables it, a blow to the head or body um, ends the fight. So here we go. Um, right away you can see we've got a pretty similar style, we're both right-handed sword fighters with uh, what's called a heater shield based on the shape. His heater um, is a little bit more straightforward shape and it's wider, mine's got some more decorative curves to it and um, is a little narrower and taller. So we've seen a few opening exchanges, these are basically testing exchanges. He and I know each other at this point but we haven't fought each other many times so I'm just rewinding and we can kind of go through this a little bit more in slow motion and when I see something interesting I'll try to break it down. So right off the bat we both square up. My guard's a little different than his. My hand is up protecting my face. That's a little bit more of a Pacific Northwest style or Ontier style and his guard is sort of more of a boxer style uh, with his hand down in front of him. So let's take a look at those first couple quick exchanges because there might be something interesting there. Um, and he and I are both testing each other, so we go into our guards, and I'll also talk a little bit about what's going on in my head as we progress. So right about here, we're definitely in range. Um, we both sort of don't have our guards fully in place. In my case, it's a little bit of a bait. Um, also, you can see that the point of my shield is at this angle, and I'm crouched really low. Um, there's a couple reasons for that. One, my shield isn't strapped right, so the point ideally uh, would be a little bit more over to the side. Um, so, you know, ideally I'd be able to rotate this point to about there. Um, that's not the case with the way it's strapped. But as we start getting into range, you'll notice both of us get more of our guards on. Right, so now I drop in, I'm covering my face a little bit more. I'm crouching really low because he's a little shorter than me. And I'm also trying to bait him a little bit, but I've really overprotected the leg. Now, as he steps in, what I do is I throw an offside shot aiming at the side of his head. He easily defeats that just by changing his body angle and taking a step back. You'll see that a lot in this fight. Killian ranges uh, for his defense so he doesn't need to move his shield a whole bunch. Now I've taken a lateral step. You know, part of the goal here is instead of walking just forward and backward directly towards my opponent, what I want to do is circle around a little bit. Right-handed fighters tend to circle um, anti-clockwise. Um, sometimes you circle the other direction, but you're going to see that generally we spiral this way because it's towards our weapon. Um, and that first opening shot, if I go back, it is a legitimate shot, but it's really just meant to keep him honest. Um, as, a, as a scrappy fighter, I'm expecting him to sort of jump in my shorts, so I want to keep him at bay. So that's sort of like a boxer's jab. If he dropped the corner of his shield, that might have hit him in the face, but he didn't. Now I'm throwing another shot that is a bit of a threat, but because he's already backing out, Honestly, this is another sort of keep them honest shot. If he had stepped in there, his threat's in danger. Uh, sorry, his head's in danger, but there's not much of a threat there. It's not like I see a big opening I'm throwing for, but it's safe. And getting my, my weapon out in front of me also protects me from his counter shot. So here we are sizing each other up again in for a second exchange. Now, in this case, you can see his momentum is already up and headed towards my shield side. So I'm poisoned waiting. Now, he's a really cagey fighter. A lot of fighters by this point would have thrown their sword forward. He's actually waiting to see what I open up, if anything. So now he's starting to commit. I've thrown that shot directly into a shield. My thinking at the time is to prepare for a follow-up shot and get a little power off his shield. And as he steps forward, now this is the shot that I really want, which is into his leg. And I faded to the right to get away from his sword. 
and I'm hoping to get him in the leg. And this is something you see a fair bit in this fight, I'm sorry to say. So here you can see I hit him right there. Now, I've gotten in the habit, um, partially because of where I used to fight a lot, of being able to visually see where the top of my opponent's knee is. So anything from the knee down doesn't count. Anything from two inches above the knee and up does count. So I'm throwing way lower than I need to. If you look, I've got all of this space under a shield that I could be throwing into. Um, but I'm aiming to what I believe is the most precise spot. But that's actually sort of a cultural thing from the Pacific Northwest. I'm used to the line in, in the fabric being where the knee armor is. So I see that and I'm like, okay, I think that's high enough. It's actually, I don't know, an inch or two low and hits him in the knee armor so it doesn't count. So he calls that shot off as no good. I'm, you know, he and I are both moving quickly. So in slow motion, you can see that my spine is not aligned with my feet. But I'm actually, you know, um, wheeling away. So I'm actually somewhat in balance. A lot of guys make sure that no matter where they are, their spine is directly over their feet, sort of like mine is there, um, which is maybe a safer spot to be in. He calls that shot low, which is the correct call. But you'll see me do that a couple more times, unfortunately, and I could have I could have taken his leg right there if I'd aimed higher. So that's a big mistake. Sorry, take a little sip. So pressing on, I'm going to run through the next exchange in slow motion. Actually, let's do it at speed first. Again, you see an opening shot that's not meant as a real threat. It's the second shot that's supposed to hit. Easily voids my thrust. We both threw easy onside shots at each other both of which are blocked pretty easily. There I'm attempting to do something I've seen Duke Sean do and I fail. There's a feint and a shot to the leg. So we've seen a few different things. These are all relatively sort of like testing the waters type shots. I'm just going to rewind back and we can go through them. Um, and, you know, all of those are, are low risk to throw. He and I are still just sort of testing each other out and he's letting me take the initiative. So here you can see even now his stance is quite different. His hand is much... Although, this is about as close as I get to matching him in terms of stance. Um, you see that very quickly I start bringing my sword up for power. I'm also moving my hand a lot to try to get him to move and react. It's not really working. So, now I know this opening shot. I've planned a feint or to freeze his shield. So I'm going for power. I reach over my head, take a step forward, and throw right into the shield. He knows better than to bite on that, but he moves a little bit. Everyone moves a little bit, but here comes my real attempt. So what I'm doing is moving my sword up in a recovery, and I'm attempting to take his leg off above the knee. Now, you can see he's read that quite well, and he just backs right out. Doesn't even come close. But the good news is I'm not that open to a counter while he's moving back. You'd see, you can see that he'd have to reach really far to get my head because my arm is extended. So again, both of us are relatively safe. Um, if he hadn't been moving backward or was in a position to spring forward, I could have been in more trouble. All right, so we set up again. We've seen this. Now I believe it's a thrust. Yeah, now this is a thrust I throw a lot, um, and it's just not working on Killian. It opens like a shot that's going to hit him with the blade of the sword. It's supposed to look like a shot that's going to come in from that angle and hit him with the front edge of the sword. But in reality, what I'm doing is trying to... I want to get the point of my sword past the edge of his sword, so I'm actually going to make my sword shorter, in a sense, by holding my hand back to try to miss his blade and get inside and thrust him. Now, a lot of guys don't move their sword like he did because they want to block what looks like an edge shot here. But he reads it just fine, blocks it just fine, and now I'm in a pretty exposed position because not only has he read it well, he's stepped in. All right, so now I'm in a bit of trouble because he's taken a half step forward and I'm extended. So this is a little bit of a dangerous situation for me to be in, and he's going to try to start taking advantage of it because I don't have a quick recovery from there. Now, fortunately for me, he throws a high shot. He's blinded himself with that block, so he throws from my head. And you can see here another problem. My shield bends really badly. It's not thick enough. So I really need to overblock a lot, and I've made sure that the strap on my shield is loose so that I can do that a little bit with my hand. I need a firmer shield. It's just not made out of you know, great material. Now, fortunately, he didn't rip my leg off. He probably could have. And he and I throw another cross of blows at the same angle as each other to keep each other honest. Moving into the next exchange. 
Here we set up, same thing again. I've changed my foot position a little bit, but this looks a lot like our opening positions at the very beginning of the fight. This time he decides to take initiative. Oh, maybe not yet. Sorry. Now, I, ah, uh, yes, this is where I attempt to do something that Duke Sean does. I've seen it in video a few times. I really need to ask him what he's doing here. Duke Sean of Artemisia throws this thing that looks a bit like a wrap, hits his own shield, and then inexplicably to me, turns into an onside shot to the head and hits them. So I'm like, maybe I'll try that. Crown is probably not the place to be trying out shots you saw on YouTube and don't understand. Uh, but I guess I just felt like it. Obviously, I didn't do it right, and I don't even know what right looks like, so I hit my shield, and then I try for an onside shot, and, and Killian's probably just confused as to what I'm doing, does a nice sword block, leans back, and we're out. Now, because he's leaned back, he doesn't have much of a counter for me, so I get a chance to recover. And once again, at this point, he and I have mostly just probed each other. We've had one real exchange. Now I'm in a power position, so I've got my sword over my spine. This is sort of um, what I think a lot of people would call the Duke Paul of Bellatrix style. My head's wide open, I'm lean forward, it looks like I'm presenting a big target for him. I also have a target under my shield edge, if you can throw there. So I'm presenting these targets, but what I've got is a lot of power coming this way or this way. So I'm sort of, this is a bait is what I'm thinking. And as soon as he steps in to take it, I'm like, yeah, maybe I shouldn't bait that much. But what I'm hoping to do is get him to step forward um, the other thing you can see at this point is you can see his shield's quite wide. I haven't thrown a lot of body wraps. That's where you would hit the back um, with the back edge of your own blade. I don't see a lot of opportunities for that in this fight because his shield is so wide, even though it's curved. There's probably lots of opportunities there. And at this point, I've missed a couple opportunities at that leg. But that's probably what I'm looking at right now. So now we set up and we're going to go in again. Now, this is the last shot in that exchange that we saw at speed. And just doesn't quite work because I hit him low again. And even if I'd hit him high enough, it might not have landed with enough power. So here you see me trying to sell a big fake. What I do is I go up with the body, out with the hand as a pump fake. And then I drop back down with the body and try to throw onto the shield. So he bites on the fake but fades out as a good response. So he steps back, so he's blocking his head because he knows that's a real threat. Um, and if I'd seen him not move his shield, or if I'd seen him leave himself open, hopefully I'd still be able to throw that head snap. I don't remember at that exact moment, but hopefully I've got the mechanics. If his head comes open, I'll throw a fake rising snap instead of uh, a fake leg snap. So here I pop up with a hand pump down. I do get, I race his shield down, I get under it, and the fact is, he's already dropping his shield, so he's already read the fake. Um, I do connect, it's just with the tip of the sword, and again, it's low. Now, at this point, I'm aiming where I want to go, chasing his shield down, and I hit him low there. That's probably right on top of his knee cop. And, again, I'm sort of used to, like, people put a line of trim on their garb or something, so I know, like, above the line is fine. Here I'm guessing, and I'm not guessing right. That's the second time I've hit him low. Fortunately, not hard, doesn't hurt him. All right, and then let's continue to go through some more exchanges. We set up once more. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Now he's coming in. A couple exchanges rotating. You can see we're not fighting super fast. Tag another shot. I think that one was either low or light. I don't recall. And then there's a pause here. So we'll go through that exchange real quick. So here he comes in. Oh, sorry. Here's where he's going to come in. And you can see he's much more balanced. He's centered over his feet a lot more. His body is generally not leaning forward and back as much as mine. He's not getting into such unusual positions. When he leans forward like that, he's coming in. And he's got great footwork. And it looks super dramatic, too. Um, so here he's looking for a shot. I'm reading this as a potential snap or wrap. So I'm seeing this as a threat right here. But it could also be a feint to hit me low or wrap me low on the, the side. So what I've done is I've left my shield down and I'm using my sword to provide a defense up top so that that entire left side of my body is blocked and I'm hoping that I then get a counter Moulinet. So he's waiting to throw the shot, he decides to go high and he's jumping, I can see it's onside or wrap. At this point, I'm gonna continue following his sword as deep as I need to to block it. So it comes off the basket here and I try to get that Moulinet in. His sword is recovered enough and his shield's there and here, 
He's actually got me in a real compromised position. If this was an organization different than the SCA, this would be a good point for him to punch me with that shield, push me back. You can see I'm off balance because I've tried to lean back to create the room to throw my shot down, um, which leaves me a bit off balance. Um, fortunately, he's a nice dude and doesn't knock me over, and, and that's not really allowed in the SCA anyway. So now I've gotten a step back to recover, and he's wound up. He's got a lot of options here. He could throw... From this hand position, he could throw offside here, or he could throw onside here, or he could throw onside to the leg. And if he's really good, he could even throw an offside leg, right? There's, there's, he's got a lot of stuff. He's all chambered up. So I've just got to, got to read it, and this is why I've got, uh, I've adopted the stance that he's got here. Uh, this is his sort of basic stance, both hands out front, whereas normally one of my right hand is high. And I'm doing this because I don't know what's coming next. And as soon as he pumps back, I can see there's going to be a shot in that line. Now, here's a point where I totally misread it. I think he's going to be throwing onside head. And instead, what he does is throw that offside with a bit of a lean and on the step. Now, watching this, I can't quite hear what I say after the fight. You can see he connects with my arm. And watching the fight, I'm thinking maybe I should have taken that as an arm shot. It looks like it hits me in the gauntlet or the bell. So the, the wrist is not a legal target, and I think that's where I felt it. Because it's a pretty clean shot, and it looks like it hits me in the forearm. So I probably could have taken it as an arm, but it also looks like it's connected with the demi-gauntlet. So I'd feel it on the hand and the basket. Um, I don't think I called it light, but I'm not sure... And if we play it back at speed, which I will, I don't know that you can hear what I said. So I thought it wasn't a good shot. And I'm continuing to swing through and bounce off his shield. He's well protected here. No real threat. And now he's wound up probably going for the leg. I'm defended. And he, in fact, does, but I void. You can see here, um, I've stepped out and I'm circling around to get away from his sword. I threw another shot for the leg this time. That one, almost certainly, the last two were low. That one low again. Right, so big problem here. And in this case, what I'm trying to do is hit in a spot where the sword will be somewhat perpendicular to his leg. So this is another place where it's like, well, he's got all this open. Why not aim higher? In the earlier example, I had a good reason, or I had no good reason not to aim higher. In this example his leg is almost perpendicular to my sword. So if I was aiming here, my sword would just skip off. So I'm trying to get the, the sharpest angle I can, and I'm a little blind, and we're on the move, but again, I've hit him low. That's the third time. None of them are egregiously low, but it's still something that I feel pretty bad about. Right, he's got good leg armor protection. It's not hurting him, but it's not, it's not a target. It's not what I'm supposed to be aiming for, and I would have liked to rip his leg off. All right, so let's go back and listen to that at speed, and maybe you can hear, uh, I couldn't hear when I listened to this before, what it was I said about that arm shot. I've shaken my head, I've said something to him. He said probably low. Um, so hopefully he felt that it wasn't good, I felt like it wasn't good, and I didn't just accidentally blow a shot because it hit me in the gauntlet. Um, all right, and then we're coming up on the last standing pass, I think. Oh, there's an... Okay, yeah, so here there's a thrust to the head. That skips off the top of his helmet. It's no good. In Kaid, any thrust to the face is hard enough, but that didn't hit him in the face, so there's a little bit of confusion. You know, the marshal isn't quite sure where that landed, um, but both uh, Killian and I are like, no, that, that thrust was no good. So we press on. All right. Now, the second half of the fight. Oops, I'm going the wrong way. I always do that, sorry. All right, here we go. Back in. Once more. All right, so two leg shots that time. Finally, I got that leg that I've been aiming for, and it wasn't low. So let's go back and take a look at those real quick. All right, so here we go. Boy, I need a little bit of fast forward control, don't I? All right, moving forward. We're in the right spot now. Bear with me, I apologize. So that first shot, you can see I have finally hit high enough, I think, here. 
right? But I'm skipping off. And I'm guarding my head because I, at this point, have read that he's not going to be able to hit me in the leg without bringing his hand back. So I guard the headshot, but because I'm leaning back and getting out, maybe the headshot, it bounces off my shield and whiffs. But because I'm leaning back, that first one doesn't land. He says no, as he should. And this time he's not relenting. He's going to come right back in, using his momentum, powering off his legs. I've chambered up, and once again his shield comes up, and I'm finally cue in and get it high enough. Now at this point, you can see he's all chambered up, and he's just going to smoke me in the head. Right? This is where I'm really glad that I've borrowed a play from Duke Davin of On Tears. Um, strategy where my shield is a loose strap so I can move it around more than some arm strap shields it's tiring but um, and it has a little bit less strength but given that my shield bends and folds anyway I, I'm not losing that much strength but what I do get is some flexibility you can see I push my shield way up now Killian loses the headshot and throws on the arm aiming for the slot so the head disappears he throws here and it basically misses my arm I think it catches the outside elbow fan of my arm and bounces off the basket hilt, but it's no good. And you can kind of see the angles now, right? So here I'm saying, yep, that hit the elbow fan. Um, now we set up, and in SCA combat, from this point forward, he's fighting from his knees. We can probably go through this one time and go, because there's a lot of probing here. Psychologically, what I'm doing, I know that that thrust has missed a few times before. I'm throwing the thrust just to try to get him to worry about it because he's gonna have a really solid defense. So I need him to be worried about blocking his face and I'm trying to get him to open up. But he's, you know, cagey and smart and won't open up, won't slide forward. And that's the exchange. So, um, go through it real quick. All right, so again, thrust that's not really intended to get him. I know it's not gonna work but I'm trying to make him think about the face. And here I drop, you can see I drop the tip of my sword to make it disappear behind his shield. And a really experienced fighter like Sir Killian is gonna be like, that probably means a thrust is coming or a fake thrust to body wrap, right? So now I bring the sword up to make him, okay, the, the tip has appeared again, now it's disappearing. Is it, where is it going? That's what I'm trying to do psychologically, but it's not really working. He just easily gets that thrust away from his face and goes for a counter. And he throws the counter at a really interesting angle, which throws me off. I'm expecting it to come around from the outside, and it comes almost down the middle line. So I back out. Another thing I should point out is in the SCA, especially in Kaid, there are rules that you can't get too close to an opponent who's legged. You can't step past their knees and throw more than one blow. You can't crowd them. You can't knock them over. So I'm trying to fight at range a little bit. Um, so here I throw a shot at sort of gets maybe just a hair over the shit, not even. I'm just trying to see if maybe I can get the top of his head, not a chance. And he throws for my face and block it, not a chance. Now I'm hoping to counter, right? I see this opening that's created, but he actually ducks down behind his shield enough that the corner of his shield blocks it, which is awesome. Really cool move, teardrop return. Um, I'll go back a little bit. The reason this is called a teardrop return, I'm not sure if I can draw this well on screen, but I'll try, um, is because it should make a teardrop shape in the air, sort of like that. That looks like a word bubble. Uh, it, it looks less like a teardrop and more like I'm saying hi or something. Um, anyway, so the, 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 sh the sword should travel with a, a, a circle. I'm being really inarticulate. <laughs> it, it should look like a teardrop. So the blade comes around, goes back to the same point, and I'm trying to throw a second blow. He's well covered. Not the best explanation of a teardrop, but what I'm really trying to do is get that Moulinet and it doesn't land. And you'll see I go for that same sort of combo again later. This last time it lands, uh, later Killian and I talked about it. I think he thought it hit him in the face. I wasn't sure. Um, so it probably should have landed harder or we should have kept fighting. I thought it was a good blow at the time, but you know, in watching the video, I think he took a pretty light shot and I wouldn't have second guessed him if he'd said that was light, like you should hit me harder than that but it is what it is, and we walked off the field. So we set up another thrust to get him busy, hoping he's gonna open up, he doesn't. So I throw that snap, get him up and moving again, and now he's finally created that opening. So what I've done 
is drop the sword straight down the slot. And that's what I've been trying to get him to do pretty much most of those exchanges, is get him to open up and move forward on me. I can't move forward on him too much because that would be crowding him, but if he moves forward on me, that's totally fine. So again, throw a shot, get him busy, get him defending, and get him counterattacking. As soon as he counters, he's going to open up is my hope. And the slot that I'm looking for is right between his sword and shield. So he throws, the shield comes out, the slot opens up, and what I do is yank the hand. This is, um, I call this a Moulinet shot, I think lots of people do. Um, but you yank the hand down, and that makes the tip whip around, and it lets you throw a pretty vertical shot in a confined space. Now you see this, I'm waiting for it, waiting for it, waiting for it, and I drop the shot in and peg him basically right above the eyebrows. But it's with a tip that has a thrusting tip on it, so it's got like foam on it, it probably doesn't land super hard. He takes it because it came clean, um, and that's the end of the fight. So, um, I've got a lot to learn from this fight. I threw three low shots. Um, none of them were hard, none of them were egregious. Um, they didn't injure his knee or anything like that, but two of them, I could have hit a valid target. And it's never cool hitting people low, even if you apologize. Like, it happens, um, but I should be aiming higher. I shouldn't be relying on my opponent having trim or a knee pad or something to make it clear um, where their target is. It's clear I need to restrap my shield, and it's clear that I need to throw that Moulinet harder, especially if it's gonna land with a tip on the helmet. You know, I was aiming for the face or trying to get it in the body, but I can throw that Moulinet harder. So there's a lot for me to pick up there. Um, fortunately, you know, Killian's a, a great person to learn from, and he and I have been able to fight again since. So, um, awesome dude. All right, so again, what I tried to do was strike the right balance between talking about the fight, you know, at my level, Fighters who are much better than me probably don't get a lot from it. Um, but also to occasionally describe things in sort of layperson's terms in case you come from another fighting organization, you have different rules, or you're just a little bit newer fighter, or maybe you're just wandering around YouTube and find this interesting. If you think I'm striking the right balance, or if you think these videos are interesting, let me know. I'll keep doing them. If not, I'll probably stop doing them so much. Anyway, one way or another, well, I should say, I'm going to continue to analyze them. I'll probably stop posting them on YouTube. So let me know if you like them or not. And uh, thanks again.